two high performance gravel bikes, two very different approaches. But which gravel bike is best? Full suspension or rigid? I'm going to put BMC's technical marvel, the URS LT1, head to head with Giant's recently revamped Revolt Advanced Zero. Both come from the top of their respective ranges and both hope to lure you into the world of drop bar dirt riding. For the record, BMC's URS LT1 comes in at £7,600 or $7,999. The Giant Revolt Advanced Zero, a pound under five grand or $4,400. Which would you choose? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. BMC's rear suspension was first seen on the original URS. It's called Micro Travel Technology. A similar version is now found on the front of the URS LT. The seat stays contain a section of elastomer with twin alloy shafts that slide up and down to provide a smooth 10 millimeters of travel. The MTT fork was designed in conjunction with High Ride. That's the company that helped design Pinarello's Roubaix specialist Dogma FS bike. But this is a little more sophisticated. The head tube hides 20 millimeters of tunable suspension and it comprises of a coil spring and a hydraulic damper. There's a dial control sitting atop the head tube, allowing you to tune the feel of the bike and even lock it out for when you're riding on smooth roads rather than gravel. The BMC's geometry also shows the same forward thinking approach as the technology on the chassis. The front end of the bike combines a slack 70 degree head angle there to give the bike a longer wheelbase and a more stable feel over rough surfaces. That's combined with a size dependent short stem of 70, 80 or 90 mil. This counters the potentially slow steering of the slackened angles because the shorter stem means quicker steering. BMC have got the steering responses of the URS dialed. It tracks straight and stays true under braking, yet allows you to nimbly navigate more technical stuff should you want to wander into single track mountain bike territory. At the back, it's a radical difference. It's a steep 74 degree seat angle and a zero offset seat post that puts you slam over the center of the cranks, making the URS feel road race bike responsive when accelerating. Yet the soft tail rear end doesn't slacken that angle overtly, so the URS never feels like it's bobbing old school mountain bike rear suspension style. Without going into too much detail, BMC have also built compliance into key areas of the frame and the fork and even used their signature D-shaped carbon seat post. Now the Giant Revolt doesn't have quite the same long list of tech to relate to you. Yes, they've added some ability to change things up, but in comparison, it's a stripped down chassis. At the heart of the new Revolt is an all new frame and fork that saves over 200 grams over the previous model. At first glance, it looks remarkably like the outgoing design, but that's hardly surprising when the frame takes so many signature design cues from their road range. The triangulated head tube to top and down tube junction recalls the TCX cross bike with a bit of TCR thrown in too. At the back, the overlie seat tube with its aero style cutaway looks very much like Giant's Defy endurance road bike, as does the drop seat stays. There are a few key changes. The new seat stays are slimmer than before and the yoke as they join the seat tube is flattened to add a bit more flex. It retains the D-shaped seat post that debuted on the TCX and has become a staple of bike design from many, many brands. The seat post fitment however is new, it's round with a wedge to take the D-shaped post, so the Revolt can accommodate a dropper post should you want to change it up. The new fork is lighter and provides clearance for up to a massive 53mm on a 700c rim. At the rear there's a clever flip chip rear dropout, so you can extend the wheelbase to accommodate the same size tyre here too. However, in its short standard setting, you get 42 millimeters of clearance. The BMC, in contrast, has a max clearance of 45 millimeters on 700C rims. The increase in tire size and the extended wheelbase, Giant say, also has an effect on the trail. That means it pushes out to 68 millimeters on this large model. In theory, this should have a bit of stability when you're making the most of bigger tires on tough terrain. I wasn't sure what to expect from just 10 millimeters of suspension at the rear. It's less than a tenth of what most modern mountain bikes get, for instance, but the ride quality of the BMC is just superb. Though to think of the URS LT as a suspension bike, like Pidcock's Olympic gold medal winning unbranded BMC four stroke is missing the bike's aim. The URS LT sets out to be a fast gravel bike that brings comfort and vibration reduction into play. It's not about squashing big drops or traversing boulder strewn descents. It's about making things smoother when you're off-road, that's it. The RS LT has a wonderfully compliant feel, especially on teeth chattering, bone rattling, byways and rutted fire roads. It feels a bit like Cannondale's Topstone Lefty and a RockShox Ruby Ultimate Suspension Gravel Fork equipped Canyon I've been riding recently. 
It gives a ride akin to running big two and a half inch plus tires. By that I mean you get the plush smoothing effect of big balloon tires without the sluggishness in acceleration and the added weight. In fact, the BMC is running relatively slender 40mm WTB Rattler tyres on its own tubeless ready carbon rims. It makes for light running gear all adding to the URS LT's lively feel. At 9.87 kilos, the BMC is respectably light for a gravel bike that's so capable and so versatile. And when I say versatile, I really mean it. The frame comes ready for front and rear mud guards, a rear rack, and even has internal cable routing provision for a front dynamo hub. It's not the stripped down flyweight that the 8.33 kilo Giant Revolt Advanced Zero but the MTT system does make the URS LT a more forgiving friend when the going gets really rough. The drivetrain is a mashup between SRAM's mounted and gravel components. Force axis shifters and brakes along with a 38 tooth single rear force carbon chainset are matched to a 12 speed X01 Eagle rear mech and a super wide range 1052 tooth cassette. It all works rather well together with slick accurate shifts and powerful braking to boot. That big cassette however does get quite vocal. Ping the chain down towards the mid-range gears at the top of a climb and you're met with a metallic ping as that sandwich plate size 52 tooth ring resonates after being released from its chain tension state. It doesn't affect performance, but for some it will be like nails down a chalkboard. Future editions of the URS LT bikes will no doubt adopt SRAM's more gravel specific explore gearing rather than this mullet setup. The WTB SL8 saddle is a quality item with classy titanium rails, but for me, I didn't find it an especially comfortable place to be seated. Your experience may vary as saddles are just so subjective. The Eastern EA70 AX handlebar has a more subtle flair than most gravel bars, and it's well shaped with the oversized diameter of the top section making for a really comfortable hold, and it's wrapped in nice quality bar tape too. At this price, however, I'd expect carbon over alloy when it comes to the bar, as good as the EA70AX is, I do feel a little shortchanged. Of course, a carbon bar might look nicer to some, but they're often manufactured to reduce vibration too. The Giant Revolt comes with Shimano's gravel-specific electronic gearing, the mighty GRX Di2. I've already got plenty of experience on this group set from both my own personal and long-term test bikes, so I'll save you my thoughts. But if you want to see a full review, then click on the link in the description. As upsetting as this might seem, Shimano bringing the 12-speed semi-wireless updates to GRX for 2022 is very unlikely, as the Revolt has the 11-speed GRX RX815 throughout. However, I still rate this group set highly, despite an issue I had, which I'll talk about in a moment. The GRX lever shape is designed to better fit your hand when braking from the hoods. Combined with mountain bike servo wave tech, it means the brakes here have the best feel from the hoods and a combination of power and progressive feel. As good as SRAM's force hydraulics are, for me, GRX DI2 takes the braking chops simply for how good these feel from the hoods. The DI2 shift in is exact and precise every time, and the clutch equipped rear mech keeps the chain bounce in check superbly. I still have some reservations on wiring and gravel mixing. I've had one episode where I dropped the bike into a corner. I'm blaming the tires rather than my lack of finesse. That incident twisted the left-hand shifter and upon straightening it, I managed to pull the DI2 wire from its connection, rendering the system dead, which meant a lot of trail side fettle in to get to find the problem and secondly, reconnect the cables so I could continue with 22 gears rather than one. I was already a really big fan of just how adept the Revolt felt when the going gets rough. The new design builds on that character. Back to the Giant's handling, the front end feels sharper, quicker to react and a little bit nimbler. It may have lost a little stability, but it more than makes up for it um, by making the bike just much more exciting to ride. It's on-road manners, even with 40C tyres, feels very similar to Giant's Defy, itself one of the very best endurance bikes available. At the rear, the combination of skinny stays and the new defused seat post gives bags of compliance. It's not quite up with the URS, but it's not as far off as you'd expect. The Approach SL saddle is a fine place to sit on for a few hours. It wouldn't be my first choice, but it certainly didn't offend me either. For those of you of a roadie persuasion, the 8.33 kilo weight sounds somewhat average on paper, but the Revolt Zero rides like a much, much lighter bike. A lot of that goes down to the new CXR wheel set with a weight of just 1,398 grams a pair. That's quality road wheel weight rather than the toughened gravel hoops built to take the hard knocks. The wheels accelerate well with a solid, laterally stiff feel, and the 54-point engagement from the DT Swiss internals on the giant hubs means snappy acceleration when you put in a big effort. 
Giant should be applauded for sending out all their bikes set up and sealed tubeless. Far too many brands compromise their bikes by equipping tubeless wheel sets, tubeless tires, and then bugging in it inner tubes to make them the worst of both worlds. So which of these gravel munching machines is the best? Well, it has to be said that both the BMC and the Giant are brilliant examples of cutting edge gravel bikes. I'd say if you come into gravel from the road side of things, then I'd recommend getting a ride on the BMC. Its ride quality is unlike anything you'll have experienced with drop bars, and it's a match for bikes like Cannondale's Topstone Lefty and Canyon's Explore suspension equipped Grizzle. If you're coming at gravel from the mountain bike side of things, I'd recommend the Giant. It'll give you a flavour of the lightweight world of drop bar riding, yet still feels familiar and fun when hacking down single track in the woods. But again, this is just my take on these bikes. This is fast becoming a crowded section of the market. Cervelo Aspero, Specialized All New Crux, and Cannondale Super 6 Evo CX are all vying for your attention. The question though is, which one would I choose? Personally, I'd opt for the Revolt. It's lightweight and nimble, and it just makes it feel more of a jack of all trades. It's certainly the quicker bike on tarmac sections between trails, and it's very well priced for the level of kit it comes supplied with. Although, the BMC is one great looking bike, and it's an absolute blast when it comes to riding off-road. Those are my thoughts, but what are yours? If you could only choose one, which would it be? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel.